Over half of the world's 5.3 billion internet users are on the messaging platform WhatsApp. Owned by Meta, WhatsApp is the world's largest social messaging app, with almost as many users as Facebook. Over 100 billion messages are exchanged on the platform every day. It's being used truly globally, so think of India, Indonesia, Brazil. It's sort of everywhere and it's effortless to use. You maybe don't think too deeply about using it, but you would be in real trouble if someone took it away. But that's not necessarily the case in the U.S. While nearly a third of the U.S. population does have WhatsApp, for most Americans, it's not their primary messaging platform. And though Meta doesn't break out WhatsApp's revenue, it's estimated to be between $500 million and $1 billion, a minuscule portion of the nearly $117 billion in annual revenue that Meta brought in last year. Unlike Instagram and Facebook, WhatsApp doesn't run ads. Nearly all of its revenue comes from business messaging, which it introduced in 2018. With this service, large companies pay a fee to interact with customers on the platform. It's a growing market, and WhatsApp is leaning in. We expect business messaging market to be worth about $50 billion in about four or five years' time. Right now, nearly all of that market share comes from regular SMS messaging. Think of an airline texting you about a flight delay, or your bank texting you a confirmation code to log in. But those interactions, and much more, could soon take place on WhatsApp. And Meta is looking towards this as its next major revenue source. You know, our playbook over time has been build services, try to serve as many people as possible, you know, get our services to a billion, two billion, three billion people. And then we, we basically scale the monetization after that. And we've done that with Facebook and Instagram. WhatsApp is really going to be the next chapter with business messaging and commerce being a big thing there. WhatsApp was founded in 2009 by former Yahoo employees Brian Acton and Jan Kuhn. The initial concept was for an app that would display statuses next to your contacts' names. So you'd say things like, I'm off to the gym, or I'm just getting my hair done. And that's why they picked the name WhatsApp. It's intended to sound like, what's up? But they saw very early on that people were really using it for messaging. And so they pivoted into building out a full messaging service. That's when users started flocking to the app. At the time, free texting services were scarce. BlackBerry's BBM messaging was the main alternative. And while unlimited texting plans have been the norm in the U.S. for many years, they were and are much less ubiquitous in the rest of the world. But WhatsApp has always been essentially free, although it did initially have a $1 annual fee, which it scrapped in 2016. Back in 2009, it was extremely expensive to yes. send a text message. Absolutely. And you know, if you want to make a call, or particularly an international call, that might set you back hundreds of dollars. So long as both parties are connected to Wi-Fi, WhatsApp allows for free international calls. This, along with free unlimited texting, is the main reason why WhatsApp took off internationally and among American users with family and friends abroad, but not so much for domestic correspondences. The app has been growing steadily since its inception, though, and was acquired by Facebook for $19 billion in 2014. At the time, it was the largest acquisition of a venture-backed company in history. Can you tell me the growth curve of WhatsApp? By 2014, when it was acquired by Meta, it already had 200 million users. And at that time, they could see a path to 1 billion users. But actually, within a couple of years of being owned by Meta, it already had 2 billion users, and it's continued to grow. All messages became end-to-end -end encrypted in 2016. However, founders Acton and Coombe left Facebook in 2017 and 2018, respectively, after a major change to WhatsApp's privacy policy allowed for its user information and metadata to be shared with its parent company. But that ultimately didn't hamper growth. With lockdowns, you started to see a big increase in terms of people using and kind of signing up for WhatsApp. When Alice Newton Rex joined WhatsApp four years ago, she said the team had around 15 product managers. Today, they have around 90 and serve 180 countries in total. Now, the company is rolling out new features like channels, where users can subscribe to get updates from individuals, businesses, or organizations like sports teams in a newsfeed-like format. So far, this feature is available in Singapore and Colombia. WhatsApp is also getting into payments, allowing users to link their bank account and send money through the chat interface. That's available in India, Brazil, and Singapore. But when looking towards revenue growth, WhatsApp has its sights on its business messaging platform, which it's been expanding in markets like Brazil, India, and Indonesia for the past few years. WhatsApp have always been very picky about who and what they allow over their channels. It's only in the last couple of years that WhatsApp have been really accepting of this business messaging market. 
WhatsApp charges medium to large companies for every conversation that they have with customers. The fees vary by country and the type of conversation. For example, marketing conversations, like a business sending a customer information about a promotion or offer, are more expensive than an authentication conversation, where a user is prompted to enter a one-time passcode. In Brazil, for example, a marketing conversation is 6.25 cents, an authentication conversation is 3.15 cents, a utility conversation, which updates a customer about a transaction or purchase, for example, is 3.5 cents, and a customer service conversation is 3 cents. Today, these conversations don't usually take place on WhatsApp. Lane says that about 95% of business messaging spend is concentrated on standard SMS messaging. But he expects that figure to drop to 75 to 80% in the next four years, as more brands turn to WhatsApp. SMS is good for what it is. It's efficient, it's effective, it's powerful, but it's only you know 160 characters and it's limiting what you can actually do with it. There are other alternatives, like MMS messaging, which stands for Multimedia Messaging Service and allows for up to 1,600 characters and attachments like images and videos. But this isn't prevalent outside of the US and Canada, and WhatsApp hopes to offer an even richer experience anywhere in the world. So for example, if you're a restaurant, you can put your whole menu on WhatsApp, whereas the experience that you can have on a website or on an app, you can now have that within the messaging experience. If you go to India or Brazil and you look around, you'll see WhatsApp numbers posted up in shop windows everywhere. We're even trying in Brazil a business directory where people can search for businesses they want to talk to on WhatsApp. This definitely isn't the case in the US, though. And so long as WhatsApp remains a side player in the domestic messaging market, US consumers could be reluctant to adopt WhatsApp for business communication when it's just not what they use in their personal life. I think that's one vital way that I think WhatsApp can expand into the US is if they try and onboard as many US brands or enterprises through their catalog as they can. WhatsApp is also experimenting with monetizing messaging for small businesses. While medium and large companies must message customers through the WhatsApp business platform, small businesses like a hair salon or coffee shop can simply download and use the free WhatsApp business app. But now the company is rolling out paid premium features, like the opportunity to build a WhatsApp website and the ability to access a corporate account on up to 10 devices. In June, Meta announced that the WhatsApp business app had reached 200 million monthly active users, up from just 50 million in 2020. And in its latest earnings call, the company was optimistic about its business platform. As strong business messaging revenue growth from our WhatsApp business platform was partially offset by a decline in other line items. While Meta doesn't provide breakout data on WhatsApp revenue overall, Lane anticipates that the trend will continue. We expect WhatsApp to be worth roughly between about seven to $10 billion in terms of revenues from business messaging within about a five, six year period. That's up from an estimated 500 million to $1 billion today. As Meta continues to pursue its uncertain bet on the metaverse, Near-term growth opportunities like business messaging could help to stabilize the company. Because when it comes to messaging services, while there's regional competition, there's no other platform that has WhatsApp's global reach. You're gonna have these individual markets where you do have a very strong kind of platform provider. So obviously China's WeChat in Japan, it's Line in South Korea, it's Kowtalk. But again, these are very much regional channels rather than kind of global channels. And even if WhatsApp business messaging doesn't take off as expected, there are other ways that WhatsApp can drive revenue for Meta's family of apps. For example, with a tool called Click to Messaging, customers can click a Facebook or Instagram ad to start a conversation with that business on WhatsApp. And WhatsApp business users can purchase, create, and publish ads for Facebook and Instagram from within the app itself. As the channel's feature continues to be developed, Newton Rex says that there could be monetization options there as well. Maybe you'd be able to subscribe to a channel and you'd pay a small fee to hear from a, uh, a news outlet or some celebrity who you cared about. And that could include also allowing channel owners to promote their own channel in our directory. Even advertising within channels seems like it's not completely off the table. And as far as like, we discussed this a little bit, but advertising, not yet, but may, you know that's something that could be in the future. For channels, we're looking at a whole range of different monetization opportunities. We haven't fixed on any one thing yet. One way or another, as WhatsApp's user base continues to expand, we may finally see Meta's historically large bet on the messaging service start to pay real returns. By 2027, we expect there to be about 4.1 billion WhatsApp users. We think it will be the platform where brands really start to invest and it will generate billions and billions of dollars worth of spend.